Great. Well, glad to have you guys here and hosting you. Um, what I want to do is just give you a little bit of a, a really quick run of where HPE is at. Um, let me ask a couple, just a couple questions. Uh, I, I assume everybody here knows that HPE and HP Inc. separated, right? Everybody know what HPE is and how it's different, except you. <laughs> everybody understand HPE? Does anybody know what's happened to HPE in the last six months in terms of more of that kind of activity? Okay, I'm gonna tell you really quickly. So we're actually getting more focused. Um, we had uh, an enterprise services focused business. It was actually the remnants of what was EDS in HPE that was called enterprise services. Um, we, they, they had a term for that, it was called a spin merge. They actually spun it out and it merged with another company, actually merged with CSC, which was another enter, enter, uh, services business, and they are now known as DXC. So that business is now no longer part of HPE. Um, there's another spin merge that's about to happen, uh, the HPE software, which is like the roots of the old OpenView stuff and uh, <coughs> Autonomy and Mercury software. I mean, there's a number of like organic stuff that has been HP, HPE, and then some acquisitions. That's about to be spun out, and I think that's actually going to happen. I don't know the date, but it's probably sometime by sometime in August, and that is being spun out as a separate company. So basically, what is left of HPE? is a business that's really kind of focused on, on infrastructure. And there's certainly services that go along with it. There's a, there's a, a whole, the, the traditional HPE services, which was, used to be called technology services. They've kind of rebranded and they've got a name called Point Next. They do both consulting and kind of, uh, you know, the installation break fix type stuff. So that is still all here. But what I want to, I want to do is like talk to you about, very quickly, about the part that's left because I want to make sure you're level set on who HPE is. I'm going to show this for like 15 seconds, that's it, because this is like the level setting of with, at a corporate level when the people are talking to the executives in the briefing center. And apps everywhere, data everywhere, you know, it's changing the way we do things, you know, the, the things that you guys are here for with Cloud Field Day and apps being developed and being run out of the cloud, things are really changing and creates a lot of challenges that I'm not even going to like try and <coughs> cover that with you guys because it's really, uh, generally I'd say it's a waste of time. But what that drives us to is this is kind of what HPE is focused on. And this is what I wanted to level set on. So as a company, there's basically three areas that I would say we're focused on. You see kind of two of them here. Hybrid IT, and that's obviously where our infrastructure fits. So we recognize that in this new world, people are going to have different ways they want to run their IT, whether it's on-premises, off-premises. Uh, whether it's private cloud, public cloud, traditional infrastructure, we're basically setting ourselves up to be able to, to help customers do all of that. Intelligent Edge, you know, IoT is a hot topic, definitely outside of my expertise, but um, you know, there's a lot of data that's being <coughs> created on the, on the edge. What are we going to do with that data? How do we do something intelligent with it and create networks and things that Peg is going to be you know, talking to, to the Tech Field Day folks about in a couple weeks? So, and that's actually where Aruba sits, is within that intelligent edge. So, in, in that intelligent edge, from a product standpoint, that's where IoT sits, and that's where um, Aruba sits. And then it still just comes all together with the services and having the expertise to, to make that all happen from a services standpoint. So, you can see HPE is really becoming a very focused company. Um, a lot of things th that have happened in terms of, you know, splitting from HP Inc., Getting, doing the spin merge and getting rid of the enterprise services business and having that be a separate business and now HPE software becoming a separate business. These are really the, the, the core of what we're focused on. And the whole idea is to become more nimble, to pardon the pun, but to be more focused and be able to uh, really a focus on, the, on making IT, hybrid IT simple and powering the intelligent edge and doing that with the services that we've got. It's still a big portfolio. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we're not going to be able to talk about here because the expertise that we have in the room is pretty limited to the, to the things we're talking to you about. But, I mean, it's still a huge portfolio. You can see some data along the bottom. Um, it, HPE is actually number one in private cloud infrastructure. We're number one in servers, number one in cloud-built infrastructure. And I actually can't tell you what cloud-built infrastructure means, but if you want to know what that means, there's an IDC tracker that can, you can pull that information from. We're actually number one in total storage. We're number two in external storage. We actually were number one in total storage until some companies 
got acquired and came together. I can't remember the name of the companies, um, but two companies came together and they, they took over that number one spot by virtue of their merging. And we're number two in, um, in integrated platforms. So it's, it's a huge, it's still a huge portfolio. And, uh, but the focus that I think I'm seeing is, is pretty cool. And the focus that we're really now, at least in the part of the business that we're in, that we're gonna to talk to you about is really the part that's focused on the um, hybrid IT. I went the wrong way. Okay, so um, what I want to do is then now we're going to just give you a quick update on what's going on in terms of the Nimble acquisition and the kind of the integration of HPE storage and, and Nimble storage. But Calvin, do you mind if I just jump in quickly? <clears throat> Obviously, it's a massive change that HPE has done splitting, but focusing on becoming an infrastructure company in a cloud world where you're no longer competing just against Dell, EMC, IBM, those kind of companies, but you're competing at an infrastructure level very much with Azure and AWS. What do you say to customers who go, you're focusing on something that's declining, that's going to be dead, why should I even bother investing anymore with HPE? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's going to be uh, you know, questionable to say, is, is everything moving to the cloud? It's not, and I think, I don't know, you know, that's a debate everybody can have. I think here, here are a lot of people that think traditional infrastructure is going away and people aren't going to do it. I'm not sure you're saying that. You're saying it's declining, right? Um, <coughs> customers still want that influence. And the fact is that you still need the infrastructure somewhere. And Microsoft's a customer of HPE. And they're using what we sell, I'm sure, in, in, in Azure infrastructure. So it's, it's not like the, the, the people that are doing the public cloud, they need the infrastructure too. So I think that I, the, it's not that infrastructure is going to go away. And I think what we're doing is still needed. I think it's a good question to ask, you know, are you, are you going to be able to return to growth? I think there's still a lot more things up the sleeve that you haven't heard about, that I haven't heard about, that I can't talk about, because I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I have some guesses of what's going to happen, but I don't think, you, I don't think you, HPE is done moving. I mean, people have said, okay, you're getting smaller, you're contracting, but we bought Nimble Storage, we bought SimpliVity. I don't think we're done. I think there's a lot more in the portfolio that people know we have. I don't know if you've heard, I mean, we expect to end Q4, our, our Q4 is October. Um, we expect to end Q4 with about $12 billion in cash. So I, I don't think that's going to sit in a bank account, just gain, gain, generating interest. I think you're going to see HPE make more moves. What that looks like, Maybe we'll talk to you and discover more about that. We'll <coughs> that help a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's just interesting to also think of there's obviously divesting a whole lot of businesses, taking on a whole lot of businesses. You're sort of moving out of the software world, yet bringing other products in on the software world. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting portfolio. I don't want to yeah. I don't want to stop you, so yeah, keep going. Yeah, appreciate, I, well, appreciate the question. I mean, it's a good question. And I... I have questions too. I mean, it's going to be interesting for me to see what, what the next move is because I've got some thoughts what I think they are. I'm not going to say it on camera what I think is going to happen. And they're just my guesses based on the moves I'm seeing, but I, I don't think HPE is done. I think you're going to see more moves. There's no doubt in my mind you're going to see more moves. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Nimble storage integration. Um, so I'm actually just start with a really personal story and I'm going to have Gavin talk more about it, his perspective because, um, well, Gavin can introduce himself, but he's actually... Uh, in the middle of all of this, I, I was a very late comer to understand what was going on. That's kind of the personal story I want to tell you. So my boss um, reached out to me the Thursday before the Nimble Storage acquisition happened. And he reached out to me and he said, hey, um, how, how hard is it for you to put a, put a blog post up? How long does it take you? About 20 minutes. Okay. Can, you, can you post it to go live at 5.45? Well, if you, that, to me, that's code language because 5.45 Mountain time is always when press releases go out at HP. It's 7.45 Eastern. When we do a press release, it's almost always at 7.45 unless we're at an event in Europe and it's sometime later in the day. Um, so my first response to him is, uh, okay, who are we acquiring? He's like, well, I can't tell you. I, he said, well, that, I don't know. He actually didn't even answer the question. He was just like, well, I'll, I'll be back in touch with you. So that Monday, he comes back to me and says, hey, remember last week when I was asking you? He said, yeah, I need a blog post to go live tomorrow morning at 5.45. Okay, you're going to tell me now who we're acquiring? He said, I'll send you the blog post later tonight. He wouldn't tell me. I got the blog post at about 8 o'clock or 8.30 that night, and I to put it into our blog platform and post it to go live at 5.45 the next morning. And I opened it up to start reading it, and it's like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Nimble storage? Why are we buying Nimble storage? And then actually, as I actually started thinking about it, I thought, wow, this is actually kind of brilliant. 
uh, you know, they, they fit really well into the portfolio. I didn't know about the cultural fit, and Gavin, I'm sure you can talk a little bit about the cultural fit you're seeing th now that you're here. But after I, after I started actually thinking about it, it was like, wow, this is like a great acquisition for us. And so far, I mean, I've been doing a lot of work with Gavin and his team. I create chalk talks and videos and blog posts, and I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing. So I was pretty excited to, to, to welcome the Nimble Nimble storage into the HPE portfolio. But we're not here to necessarily talk a whole lot about storage, but wanted to give you kind of an update. Well, we're going to talk all about storage and cloud, but let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of what you're seeing, Gavin, and have, have you introduced yourself to everybody. Yeah, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Gavin Cohen. And just to follow on actually with where Stephen started and what Calvin said, so the last tech field day, it was actually a storage field day that I presented at, was on March the 9th of um, this year and two days before that HP had announced its acquire its intention to acquire nimble storage so what Stephen and crew whom we knew very well having done many storage field day events actually nimble was launched at a storage field day event um, were sort of all we were all in a little bit of turmoil not really knowing what the future would hold and if I look back at the time what we went through was this idea that there was a lot of sort of hopefulness and optimism and nobody doubted the potential of what a massive organization like HP could do with, with nimble storage products. But there was also nervousness. And I think the nervousness came in about three or four different flavors. Firstly, would Nimble's pace of innovation drop down? We'd become known as building what we call predictive flash platform which is really, it's a storage platform, but it's driven through predictive analytics. And you're gonna see a lot about InfoSight predictive analytics later on. But we were concerned about, the, would the pace of innovation continue? Would our culture continue? Nimble had developed a very unique culture um, that was you know, what we felt was unique to being a startup in Silicon Valley. And the third thing, and this was something that we heard just from our customers, the phones were ringing hot was HP going to scrap our support? And I say that from the perspective of being a predictive analytics driven platform, probably the most unique way it shows itself is how we've managed to build a technical support organization driven by the process of just automating everything through analytics so customers don't experience most problems. And again, you'll hear more about that later. So now, four or so months later, what's, what's been going on? And if I go back to those three things, the first thing is nothing has slowed down. In fact, we've accelerated a lot of things that were moving maybe more slowly than they should have. And you'll see some of the cool innovations today around nimble cloud volumes, some of the new functionality of InfoSight. And then you're also going to see, which is a nice part of being part of a big company, some very interesting pieces that come out of HPE with how it couples with the, with the public cloud. Our culture, what was really nice is, as part of the storage business unit, we actually all share a lot of common heritage. So we had worked closely with a lot of people that had moved into HP over the years through acquisitions or having joined the organization. And we're seeing a fantastic fit and it's a very like-minded group of people. On the support front, and this is probably the most important thing that our customers really wanted to see, what's happened is something quite unique for a, an acquisition of this kind. Our entire InfoSight team and support organization, instead of reporting through the normal HP support org structure, actually report directly into the storage BU as an engineering function, exactly as they did at Nimble Storage. What that means is we've been able to preserve the entire team of how we do support and how we build out our InfoSight predictive analytics. But more importantly, the notion of doing that is the intent to start to spread that across other products. So you're going to see pieces that Nimble pioneered as an independent company starting to move into other HP products over a period of time. And you can probably guess that 3PAR would be the, the natural next. 